What's good everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark and we're back again with another E90 M3 rebuild episode. Now some of you guys may have seen from the previous video that we went ahead and we replaced uh, most of the airbags in the car. We did the steering wheel airbag, the dashboard airbag and also the current airbag. So I think for this video we're going to continue our quest in dialing in the interior and I think the last big thing that we need to address inside the car is going to be the seat belts. Now, for this repair, we will be utilizing the mail-in services from Safety Restore. Uh, you guys may have seen us use them in the past on Kirk's M2 build. If not, please go ahead and check that video out on our channel. I'll leave a link below in the description. For this M3 build, uh, we will be utilizing their OEM seat belt buckle repair along with their full webbing color replacement. They do have a multitude of colors to choose from, which means that you guys can pick the one that best suits your car's overall theme. For this build, however, we decided to go with something a little subtle but noticeable, which is the M Competition Stripe. Now this style you guys may have seen on the newer BMW M Competition models, such as the F80 M3 and also the G80 M3. Given that our car is a ZCP model, I thought it would be a perfect match and a nice added touch to complement the overall interior of the car. Now, because of an accident, uh, the driver's side seat belt did deploy. I will show you guys more exactly of the issue that we're dealing with once I get over to the car. But for now, that's what we're gonna be tackling in this video. Now, really quickly, I did want to give you guys a quick update in regards to some of the comments that you guys left about my OEM uh, style 359 front wheel. I have some good news, we were able to find a solution I'll just do a quick unboxing for you guys here so you guys can see exactly what we decided to go with so we have a brand new OEM star 359 wheel Now, after reading a lot of the comments that you guys left on the video, I did agree that just finding a replacement front wheel was gonna be the best, uh, most cost-effective option for this build. So that's what I decided to go with. Now, I did find a extremely good deal on this wheel. Uh, some of the used ones that I found were honestly more expensive than the price I paid for this wheel. So it was a no-brainer for me to go ahead and get this. And man, I'm actually very happy that I did. Like this wheel is absolutely perfect. And now here's a quick look at the inside of the barrel. And lastly, here's the part number for you guys. If you guys want to reference that, this is what you'll need. So that's what we have. And I think before I get this mounted on the car, I'm definitely gonna have to go ahead and ceramic coat this because I want to retain this finish as long as I can. Uh, and it will just make cleaning the wheels a whole lot easier. So there you guys go super happy with this now let's get on with the video let's go ahead and take a look at the seat belts that we will be replacing we're actually gonna be removing both but I figured I'll show you guys the issue that we're having with the driver seat belt as you guys can see it's pretty much just flopping all over the place so the mechanism inside isn't allowing the belt to retract back in place and also coming down here the tensioner for the buckle actually deployed as well as you guys can see it's pretty much stuck in this position and as compared to the passenger side you guys can see the passenger side is a lot more loose than the driver so we'll need to get that replaced but we'll save that for last because we'll need to remove the driver's seat to do that is actually pretty straightforward uh, there's just two bolts at the front one right here and then another one right here I think they're T50 Torx and then in the back there's going to be two more of those bolts holding the seat down. Now let's actually go ahead and hop on over to the passenger side because as you guys can see I already have a few of the trim pieces already removed from when I uh, removed the headliner. But I'm just going to walk you guys through just the basic steps to get the seat belt removed. Now this is not going to be a full detailed DIY but this should give you guys a good idea of what to expect when you guys are trying to remove the belts. Now before you guys begin any work on any safety features of any vehicle, you actually want to go ahead and disconnect the battery just to be safe. But to get started with the seat belt removal, the first step is actually going to be to remove this trim piece. 
It's actually held in by a series of clips. You need a pry tool similar to this to lift from the bottom and then the clips will pop out. I actually have these pieces already disassembled so I won't be showing you guys that on video but I can go ahead and flip it over. Now these are the clips that I'm referring to. There's four of them. They live in these holes. Now when you guys pry this piece up, these clips actually have a tendency to remain in place. So you guys would need to use some form of needle nose pliers or even the same pry tool that you guys use to remove them from the spaces. And from there, you guys are gonna do the similar thing to the back trim piece. Actually just removed one of them. As you guys can see, it's still in there, but that's all you need to move on to the next step. Now, for me to get this piece back in place, I will have to lift the rear seat off so I can get the clip out, but we'll save that towards the end. And then next, you guys will have to remove this middle trim piece. Uh, this is actually just held in by two of those same clips at the bottom. You pop out from underneath and then this comes right out. And then as you guys can see, these are the two clips that I was referring to that are on the lower part of this trim piece. So once that is out, the last trim piece that you guys will have to remove is actually on the side right here. Now this piece is actually just held in by two additional clips. Here's one of the clips that lives in this trim piece. So once these two clips are removed, this piece will just slide down now. But before this piece can be slid down, you guys will have to remove the rubber seal that lines the door. That's actually pretty simple. I can go ahead and show you guys that removal. Just lift up. And then same thing for the back door. And now we can go ahead and slide this piece down from the top. It's held in by these two posts and we won't be able to remove this just yet because the belt is still in place but once we remove that this piece will be able to come right out now for the belt is actually held in in three separate areas the first one is down here we'll have to remove this cover to access the bolt that holds in this portion and then up top there's another bolt right here holding in this piece and then we'll have to remove one of these bolts holding in the guide for the belt right here and then lastly, the only bolt left to remove is this one down here. And then we'll actually need to go ahead and disconnect the plug for the actual seat belt. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all the seat belts and then we'll come back once I have them removed. Now, really quickly before we continue, I want to talk about this cover right here. Uh, this cover is what sits over the lower part of the buckle. Now, I had a really hard time removing this piece because it's really clipped in there pretty tough. But the trick that I found is to remove this, you'll need to pry from the back portion of the cover. And then using a flathead screwdriver, you're gonna reach in and press down on the tab and it should pop out. This is the tab right here that you have to press down on and then that should pop it right out. And there you guys have it. So the seat belts are finally out. As you guys can see, the process was pretty simple. We're able to get the driver side as well as the passenger side belts out. And also the buckle for the driver side seat belt. Uh, this is the pre-tensioner. As you guys can see, it went off and this will have to be reset. So let's go ahead and box this stuff up and send it over to the guys at Safety Restore. And then we'll come back once we have the new belts back in. And we're back. It's been about a week and the belts finally came in. And guys, trust me, these belts turned out really great. Now check these out. 
I'm super happy with the way these turned out. The stitching is perfect and the material actually feels very premium. You can definitely tell that they use a very high quality belt for this replacement. I decided to go with the M Competition stripe. Uh, simple but still noticeable so I think these will be a pretty good touch to the interior. And they also went ahead and fixed the pre-tensioner for the driver seat belt. As you guys saw previously this deployed when the seat belt locked up so I'm glad that they were able to fix this. Now I did notice that one of the plastic guides for the belt is broken this piece and it seems as if they tried to fix it with some electrical tape but that is kind of unfortunate but I won't let it stop me from uh, getting these installed in the car so let's go ahead and throw these in and see how they look uh, before I actually go ahead and install the pre-tensioner um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick tip you actually don't have to remove the seat from the car all I did was remove the four screws at the base of the seat and I was able to access all the connectors underneath uh, to get to the pre-tensioner so that's super helpful uh, i'm actually glad because this seat is actually really heavy so i'm super happy that i don't have to remove this from the car so let's go ahead and throw this in and then get on to the seat belt install Now the last thing I want to do before we go ahead and wrap up this video, I did pick up a replacement battery for the car. As I mentioned before, the previous one was dead, so we decided just to replace it. The entire unit uh, went with the Duralast Platinum AGM. Uh, it matches the same dimensions as the previous battery in the car. And here are the specs for any of you guys that are wondering. Uh, it actually has 900 cold cranking amps. Uh, I think the previous one that was in the car had 850, so we're right around the same range. Uh, we'll have to go ahead and get this coded to the car. And before we actually get started, I did want to mention that I went ahead and replaced the positive battery cable. Uh, you will have to replace this if the airbags go off in any modern BMW. Uh, they tend to disconnect at the terminals, so you'll have to replace this. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't a super cheap part, but if your car is having a no start issue and you did replace the battery already, this is more likely a culprit. <sighs> wow, honestly, that was a task. <laughs> I really don't understand why these uh, batteries have to be so heavy. I'm pretty sure this one is around 60 pounds. So it's definitely not light, especially to try to get it in such a tight space. Man, that was, that was a good workout for the day. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. As you guys saw, we're able to swap the seat belts successfully. Now I only showed the passenger side on this video, but the driver side is pretty much the same exact procedure. So for those of you guys that are trying to do this at home, just follow those steps and you should be good to go. So now I'm thinking for the next video, we might actually go ahead and dive into some of the bodywork or maybe take a look at some of the engine stuff that needs to be done. I'm not too sure yet. So you guys are going to have to just stay tuned for the next episode. And as always, if you guys enjoy the content so far, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. So with that being said, stay tuned for the next video and we out.